So here are six ways that you can potentially catch a cheater in your relationship. If it's a spouse, if it's a girlfriend, boyfriend, significant other, there's a couple things you can do that are very easy ways to discover cheating without having to go through a big investigation. Number one is you can do what's called a circle back. And a circle back is where a cheater, in many cases, is going to try to cover their tracks and protect the time when they're cheating. And that cheating could be in-person meeting somebody, it could be texting behind your back, it could be secret phone calls. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna make sure that you are not checking on them at that time. And here's where the, the phrase circle back comes from. Many times in the past when our firm has done an investigation on a person for surveillance for cheating, a lot of times if somebody's suspicious of cheating, they're right. We'll find that we catch somebody doing something that they weren't supposed to be doing. But in some percentage of the cases, 15, 20% of the cases, the person that we're following, the person that we're surveilling is doing nothing wrong. They say they're going to the gym, they went to the gym. They say they're going to work, they went to work. And we noticed many years ago that when the subject of the investigation was doing nothing wrong, our client was checking in on the status of our investigation much more frequently. Look, a lot of clients want to know what's going on with the case. They may check in. Did you find anything? Did you see anything? Did you find any assets? Whatever the case is about. And of course, a client wants to know very frequently what the status is. Is there anything been discovered? But some clients are calling every 15, 20 minutes when we're doing surveillance. Are they doing anything wrong? Did they go to the gym? Did they go to work? And it's almost obsessive, them wanting to know in advance of the final report what's going on with the case. And we put two and two together. The ones where they call and check on the case very frequently, like every five or ten minutes, are the ones that were more likely where the person is doing nothing wrong. What we found is that those people hired us to follow the subject to make sure that they're not going to circle back and catch our client cheating. Right? So if our client hires us to do surveillance on somebody, but their client is actually cheating, their surveillance is for the purpose of making sure that their boyfriend, girlfriend, or spouse isn't coming back home and to catch them in the act. So you could do the same thing. How do you do it? Well, make a very uh, conspicuous plan to do something. I'm going to go to the store. I'm going out with my friends. I'm going on vacation. I'm walking down the street, right? Do something where you're making a plan in advance to be away from the other person. Give them some notice that that's going to happen because what they can do is they can make plans to call, email, text, go see, whatever, their other person, their side person, right? So let's say even something as small as, hey, I'm going to walk down the street to the store to get a gallon of milk, something stupid, right? At two o'clock, do you need anything? Nope, okay, good. Make a big deal, put on your coat, get your keys, do everything, and then watch them what they're doing. And when somebody has the opportunity to sneak a contact with their significant other, they're gonna be really excited about that because it doesn't happen that often and they're gonna be antsy. Notice that body language, right? And then go ahead and leave, make a big production out of it. Walk down the street, close the door, lock the door. Make sure you kind of looking over your shoulder, see if they're looking at you out the window or watching you drive away, watching the garage door close. But then find a way to circle back. Find a way to come back quickly. Oh, I forgot something. And see if there's something suspicious going on. See if they're still laying on the couch watching TV. See if they're still doing their homework, whatever it is. If they've changed what they're doing or if they quickly hide their phone or if there's some activity, that's a good example. We've even had clients we've recommended, you know, tell them I'm going to go take a bath. I'm going to take a shower. Turn on the water. Turn on the shower. Do everything. And then burst back out into the living room, even in your towel, to see if that person's all of a sudden on the phone. Right? The circle back is very, very beneficial because... Most people that are in a primary relationship, 
who are trying to do something on the side, look for those opportunities to sneak that contact in, whether it's a phone call, email, text, see in person, what have you. Another way you can discover that is by monitoring, this is a number two method, monitoring your internet router traffic. Because even if you're using your phone or a tablet, if you're in Wi-Fi range, the data is going to go through your internet router, your Wi-Fi router. So if you can monitor that router traffic, you can see if somebody's text messaging through that router, if somebody's sending WhatsApp messages, Facebook messages through that router at a certain time. Sometimes your router activity will even show you the text of those messages. There's certain software and things you can do. We, we can do this for clients, but it's something you could do yourself in theory. If you have more questions about it, you can check out our website, activeintel.com, and you find out more about router monitoring. So even if you walk down the street and you don't have to circle back in person, you can log into your router through your phone and watch what traffic is going on on that router when you left. The circle back is a valuable technique because they're going to play nonchalant. Oh, all right, see you later. Have fun at the store. And as soon as they know you're gone, boom, they're on the phone. They're on the text. They're Facebooking or they're going somewhere if you're going away for a long time. Number three is looking at IP devices. Many times when a cheater is using electronic contacts with a person, they don't want to use their primary phone because you might look at their phone. What are your text messages? Who are you, who are you calling? So they might have a second phone, a burner phone, a side phone that you don't know about. They keep it hidden. They keep it in a you know, briefcase. They keep it in their purse. They keep it hidden in a pocket somewhere. And they know how to do Houdini magic tricks to make you not see it. But every electronic device shows up on a Wi-Fi search. So if you go into your computer and you pull up a list of what networks are showing up, that Wi-Fi device will show up. Or Bluetooth. You can even look at what Bluetooth devices are within range. By looking at the inventory of electronic devices that are in your range, you can identify devices that maybe you didn't know about. You've probably seen it before. You see your neighbor's Wi-Fi. You see your neighbor's TV show up on your, on your Wi-Fi devices because they're in range. You can also look to see what's in your house that you don't know about. Here's another trick. Here's number four that a lot of clients have used, and it can come in handy. It may seem like a small thing. If a person is leaving the house and you're suspecting that they're going to have an in-person meeting with a, another party for physical intimacy. Basically, they're going to cheat on you. You can snapshot identify the status of that person before they go. Take a sneak picture of how they tied their shoes. Take a sneak picture of uh, maybe how their belt is aligned. And when they come back later, you can see, is it on the same belt hole? Are the shoes tied the same way? It may seem like a small thing, but we've had clients that have used this extremely well to find out if somebody took off their clothes, basically. Number five, credit report. If you can get a credit report on your partner, and there's a lot of ways that you can do that, give excuses to do that. We'll talk about that momentarily. You may find a second credit card they're using to fund these activities. Somebody needs to go to a motel. Somebody needs to take somebody out to dinner. Somebody needs to buy somebody a present. They're not going to put it on your shared credit card. They're not going to put on a credit card that comes to your house that you see the bill. They may have a second credit card that the bill goes to their work or that maybe you don't see. If you run a credit report or see their credit report, you'll see that other card and find out, well, what is this used for? Why do you have this? A couple ways you can get a credit report is apply for a joint loan and ask the lender, to, if it's a car dealership, a credit card company, a bank, whatever, can we have copies of our credit report? If the person that you're with 
hesitates about letting you see it, then you know something's up. Most of the time, they're not going to think that that's going to be an issue. They're going to forget about that credit card and they're going to let you see it. If they don't, think about it. If somebody is that close to you where you're worried about them cheating, the relationship should be significant enough where seeing their credit report should be something you want to do to make sure there's no problems. Number six, last one is, it's an old trick, but it works, is mileage on a vehicle. If you look at how many miles are on the odometer of a vehicle before it leaves, and then you look when it comes back, you'll know if they did a round trip to work, the work is 16 miles away, it should have 32 miles on it. If it's got 58 miles on it, well, they went somewhere else that was eight, seven miles each way, eight miles each way. And you can kind of draw a circle on a map where that might be. A lot of people will forget about mileage on vehicles that it's a dead giveaway. And you can make an excuse, hey, I got to go in the garage to get, you know, case of soda out of the fridge in the garage, snap a shot of the car. When they come back, make another excuse, snap a shot of the car. Mileage will be a first tip off. Now, it's not going to give you the answer of where it was or what happened, but at least you'll know that it's a red flag to look at other things. If you need more examples of how to catch somebody cheating, especially electronic, using electronic devices, we have some services for uh, digital forensics on devices that might be of interest. You can check out our website, activeintel.com. We'd be glad to be of assistance. And even if it gets farther where you need asset searches or other uh, consultation, we have video live consultations with licensed investigators available for any type of a case.